storyline aside, yeah. what is it about that these companies come out of Quebec? There's no Cirque du Soleil originated, let alone the business model, let alone the artistic model, from English Canada that plays around the world. I mean, the most that we have is Opera Atelier, which uh, takes... Uh, Bob, I don't opera. know. What are you asking me for? But I there's mean... something going... You live in Montreal. There's something going on here. Is it is it a, an innovative kind of business arts uh, point of view that creates this kind of uh, uh, ambition that we don't have in English Canada? What is it? No, that... I just think it's just an accident of history that Guy La Liberté and Guy Caron were, uh, you know, had this, uh, they were both street performers uh, whenever it was, like 22 years ago, something, on the Gaspé Peninsula, and they rented a, the, an old tent. And, uh, I mean, I don't think it had anything to do with... But is it an accident of history that Robert Lepage is with Ex Machina in Quebec City, that Carbon Couture's is here? Um, these are not accidents. It's a bit of a... A nexus, so to speak. Well, maybe, but I'm hard pressed to find it. I mean, what you seem to want me to say, or <laughs> <laughs> what you seem to be building a case for, some gene something inborn, generic, or co that that fr francophones have or have access to, or something. I just but, know when English companies have tried to go out, right? Stratford tried it, and mm -mm -mm -mm, boom failed. Uh, other companies have, on s much smaller scales from English Canada, have tried it and, oh yes, Ross does some stuff with Africa and, and the most successful is Opera Atelier, a Baroque opera company in Toronto, which actually plays in Singapore and Shanghai. I want to work for them so bad. They are fantastic. I've worked for them. But they're the only versions of that. But in a much smaller milieu, Quebec, you have two huge companies. They're playing all over the world. Now there's something going on here. Well, you know, when you mentioned like Stratford attempting to get out, you know, with the thing, which they're doing now in New York with the, you know, the thing. Well, it's there and, you know, whatever. It toured later to Florida The, the as problem well, is they had, they, they, they're taking a model that we know about, the musical, the, the musical comedy, and bringing it, it's like Coles to Newcastle or something, bringing it to New York City where the musical was invented. And so it's not like a new form or uh, so, Whereas the Cirque, uh, especially in its early manifestation, was, was the circus reinvented. I mean, it was, it was a new form of circus, which didn't involve animals, but it, it, it involves now the top circus acts in the world. That are there. You want to see the best jugglers that there are in the whole world. They're in the circus in one of their shows someplace. So they have acts. So they reinvented it. Similarly, Robert Lepage uh, kind of reinvented the, the theater in a little, well, for himself anyway. <clears throat> it's not a, a model that we, we'd seen before, something that, which was so dependent on technology and so, um, plus he's, I think he's a genius. He's much more of a genius than Guy de Liberté ever was. I agree. I mean, and he's, the depth of his erudition and stuff. I mean, the Anderson Project is about, it's about, dig this, a Quebecois guy, writer, is, has, gets a scholarship to go to Paris to study because he's writing a, a thesis on Hans Christian Andersen. You know what I mean? What a great recherche topic that is. You know what I mean? And this is all from his brain. I mean, he thought that up, I guess. So, I mean, he's, he's an extremely, um, well, erudite is you know, one of the best words I can think to describe him, you know. He's a rare personality. There, there aren't many like him around. And I don't know if that's just a product of him being in Quebec. Well, I don't think so. I just think it's accidental more than anything. The other is business acumen. Uh, the, the initial inspiration was brilliant to reinvent the circus, which they did. But the rest of it has been business. Uh, not to say that they haven't sometimes done wonderful shows, you know, some less wonderful, but they have this model that they use and now it's become familiar. So maybe let me try it this way. It seems in English Canada we let the business demands run us and give us the parameters of how we're going to create. It seems with Cirque 
and ex machina, that they have used the business reflexes to actually springboard off and give them a much better platform. So in one, our side of the line, it seems we're bound by the, you gotta have a responsible board. You gotta have business people on your board. You gotta run your theater like a business. You can't run it, you know. Whereas here, the business sense that's given the Guy La Liberté and Robert the springboard, they've actually used to harness that sense and propel them to play all of the world. And again, it's the relationship of different cultures mm. to, you know, it is how they sit. It is. Uh, think of how th the theater is funded, though, in uh, in English Canada and to a large extent in Quebec. In Quebec too, I mean, each of the theaters that we know of and have worked for you and I both for a number of them across the country, all have most usually they have a board of directors, uh, you know, uh, who hire an artistic director and an administrator. And then the, uh, then the pecking order from there on down usually comes from the artistic director, whatever. But uh, it's the initial, the big bosses finally are board members who, some of them are very devoted to their institutions that they're, but there's, there are also people on that board uh, who are bean counters and uh, their primary impulse is a business one. So, I mean, it's a, it's a double-edged sword in a sense because, in a sense, they keep it afloat. In, in other words, that it has to be. I mean, they take it as their responsibility that the the, the theater be f viable and feasible, uh, you know, and la la la. But on the other hand, uh, I mean, their, if their primary impulse is is the bottom line, uh, it has a stifling effect on some of the creation that you can do. Now that is not a t that's not a model that's typical to English Canada. A lot of Francophone theaters have boards of governors and the rest of the thing. But the, what the Cirque and Lepage have managed to do is to create even their own uh, their own financial model. Yep. They don't have any board of directors. I mean, they are responsible f to themselves ultimately. And so maybe that's the only way to find some kind of complete, yeah. maybe that's what allows you to, uh, you know. And they both funded their internal operations on playing around the world. Yeah. It's, right? It, so it, they haven't just tried to fund their work from within the beginning, Canada it was Quebec. To be a, it's an bringing international. money in from playing in Singapore and playing in Paris and playing in yeah. Las Vegas to make the home operations stronger and stronger. That's right. And that's uh, you know the coup that they did. And it's, it's a fantastic. kind of global thinking that uh, very, f very few people are capable of doing that. I mean, I mean, Stratford is great, a great institution, but they haven't recreated a model of anything really. They're trying, you know, they attempt to perfect it, which is a, a laudable uh, thing to try to do. You know what I mean? When, when Stratford goes to um, New York, with maybe say Christopher Plummer because he loves a star but when Christopher Plummer goes you know and did uh, King Lear or something you know New Yorkers pay much more attention to that and the New York critics do too than they do Stratford with Des Mackinoff and his musical comedy you know you know I mean mm -hmm. it's uh, because at least Stratford is going there uh, and they're famous for what they should be famous for production of the, it's a classical theater. So, I mean, I, I wish them all well and God love them and